Hank, I'm gonna do a white load, so make sure all your panties are in the hamper. Panties? Yeah, you know, they're little under panties. That's what I... Hey, uh, what you eating there? Um, Skittles. Can I have some? One? A Skittle? Assisted Suicide is the 14th episode of Season 4. It first aired on October 17th, 2010, and was written by Doc Hammer. In it, Dr. Venture seems to be possessed, so Dr. Orpheus enters his mind to remedy the problem. The story of Dr. Orpheus entering Dr. Venture's mind was supposed to be a B-plot in The Diving Bell vs. The Butter Glider. Jackson and Doc talk about this more in the commentary. Yeah, no, it was, it, 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 yeah, it was a potential, what, uh, D-plot or C-plot for that episode. For an episode that had too many yeah. letters in it. Where I thought, all right, we'll have guys inside his body and a guy inside his mind because there would be that classic science versus uh, spirituality argument that we like to play around with, where Orpheus was convinced that he was in a coma. Hey, your pop culture said, Jackson. Dr. Mrs. the Monarch in 21 referenced Billy Mahoney running around in a hoodie, referencing the main antagonist from the movie Flatliners, in which a group of med students temporarily stop their hearts to find out what happens when you die. Dean says he has the Bible on tape, narrated by Mr. Darth Vader. The voice of Darth Vader, James Earl Jones, put out a very popular audiobook version of the Bible in 1999. As Dr. Orpheus states, Billy and Pete represent Eros and Thanatos, which are the concepts of love and death as motivators for all human existence, as outlined in Sigmund Freud's essay, Beyond the Pleasure Principle. And while we're talking about Freud, he's also the guy that came up with the idea of the id, the ego, and the superego, which are represented by different versions of Dr. Venture. Freud essentially proposes that the id, ego, and superego are competing voices in our heads with the id representing impulsive desires, the superego being righteous and moralistic, while the ego most closely resembles our conscious thought. 21 attempts to sing Don't You Want Me Baby by the Human League, but it's so different from the actual song that it's barely worth playing the clip of the real song. Plus, YouTube gets pissed at me when I play real music on here. I will, however, play a clip from Blade Runner, which 21 quotes in this scene. I've seen attack ships on fire off the shoulder of Orion. I've seen things you people wouldn't believe. <laughs> attack ships on fire off the shoulder of Orion. Amongst Dr. Venture's invisible harem is Lindsay Wagner in an outfit reminiscent of her most famous acting role as the Bionic Woman. What's your sleep number? Also notably, she did an infomercial for the sleep number bed. 21 and Dr. Mrs. the Monarch quote the Star Trek episode The Corbomite Maneuver and reference how weird Clint Howard is in it. We must drink. This is Tranya. I hope you relish it as much as I. We must drink. This is Tranya. I hope you relish it as much as I. <laughs> This episode pays off a long-running storyline in which 21 has feelings for Dr. Mrs. the Monarch, starting all the way back in Season 2. Yeah, I'm totally falling for her. The various zombie versions of the boys are mostly based on the death scene in the montage in Powerless in the Face of Death, but also include their death from the end of Season 1, and a random drowning for good measure. When 21 says he's seen a giant penny roll over a guy dressed like a rainbow, he's referencing the death of one of Captain Sunshine's Wonder Boys. <laughs> Man, I love me some armchair pop psychology, and I love me some Dr. Orpheus, and therefore I should love this episode, but I just don't. First of all, as previously referenced, this episode was originally intended to be the other half of The Diving Bell vs. The Butter Glider, but both stories got too big. But then you end up with two whole episodes in one season in which Dr. Venture is incapacitated and people have to go inside of him to fix him? That's kind of weird. Also, the ending of this episode is so rushed. Like, the only way I had any clue as to what Dr. Orpheus' plan was to save the day was to go online and read about it, and to be honest, that random message board poster's thoughts never really fully satisfied me. Over a decade later, and I'm still not 100% sure what the hell happens in the last five minutes of this episode. But maybe the thing that bums me out the most about this episode is the implication that Dr. Venture doesn't love Hank and Dean after the events of Any Which Way But Zeus, which I felt gave new perspective into his true feelings for the boys. 
and just tell me why you love Dean more than Hank. I don't love Dean more than Hank. All that is to say, I think this episode would have been awesome if it had more breathing room, and potentially could have been a really great movie-length episode if it had stayed a part of the Diving Bell vs. the Butter Glider story. Also, I do really like just seeing people hang out playing football and stuff like that. Also, Orpheus without a shirt is a sight to behold. I love a shirtless Orpheus, and I love the Venture Brothers. As always, thank you for watching, and go Team Venture. Tune in next week for The Silent Partners. If you dug this video, share it with a friend, and if there was some huge glaring thing that I missed in this video, follow me on Instagram to see these videos a week early and offer your input before I upload the final product.